Hey guys, I hope you guys are ready for another great one. Hi everybody, welcome to The Empire Podcast. We like to engage with everyone from pastors to actors, rappers to trappers, and everybody in between. And guess what? We have another great guest for today. But before we get into it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to build this thing up. We're doing great work out here. We even appreciate everybody's support, everybody's contributions, and things like that. My name is Antonio D. Miles. I'm your host for today. And yes, the host with the most or the host with the most, whatever you want to do. And like I said, we like to do interesting interviews with interesting people. And like I said, today's not going to be a different day. It's going to be another interesting guest that we have. And um, for the people who want to help uh, support the work that we're doing, want to help contribute, um, you can do our cash app, which is dollar sign T H E E Empire Podcast. We have Venmo, we have PayPal, we have many other things that are in the description if you want to support. Um, and if you want to comment and ask questions, you can also use the super chat and things like that, our cash app to ask questions. Uh, but other than that, let's get into our amazing guest for today, an artist, visual artist, who's a, you know, wood art, I can't even, uses wood tools and different things to make art and then puts it on printmaking. It's amazing and uh we're gonna let him talk a little bit more about that and that gentleman's name is cesar garcia cesar welcome to the empire oh hello thanks for having me in this um it's actually my first uh, podcast interview so yeah thanks you oh man it's so great to have you how's your day been uh it has been good like um uh, i just made some errands before like uh, this interview so i'm thinking i'm i'm okay right now so gotcha you did some errands no you said excuse me you did some errands yeah yeah i had to do some errands before so uh, i could stay you know like calm you know with no rush got hey that's you know that's one of the things i hate is like rushing and it's like ah like you get like the anxiety you know what i mean you're like ah yeah, I know. <laughs> that happens uh, when, like, I have, like, deadlines for, like, uh, you know, for an exhibition or, like, just commission. Like, uh, like, I don't know. I think, like, most of the artists are like that. Like, you know, they they do things at the last minute, you know. <laughs> they wait for the last minute to do anything. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, I'm just trying. I'm just working on that, you know, just uh, to... You know, uh, try to do things on time or before time, you know. you know. Yeah, you know, it's so hard, you know, but I think it it helps, like, if you don't like anxiety to, like, just, like, for me, it's like, I, I got to get it done now, so don't have to think about it later. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So now, so since you got it done, now you're chilling, right? Yeah, right now, like I said, yeah. Um, no rush. Yeah, so. Got you. And you can, you can enjoy your day. Yeah. Yeah, I want to enjoy it. Well, you know, Cesar, it's so great to have you here, man. Uh, I'm glad you got all your errands done. I love your background. Actually, matter of fact, can you tell us a little bit what's in the background right there? Can you tell us what that is? I was like this. Yeah, I love uh, it. Yeah, so this is a piece uh, one of my friends made. Uh, it's uh, Elle. Um, she makes a lot of like uh, like this type of art, like uh, using like recycled materials, like uh, materials she finds in the nature. Um, so yeah, she gave me this uh, piece. Actually, um, she uh, she told me, uh, could you save uh, my pieces because uh, she had an exhibition at Creative Grounds uh, in San Bernardino, and she told me, oh, I'm not gonna be able to pick it, pick them up. Uh, could you pick them for me? And I was like, yeah. And there was like two pieces or three, I remember, and uh, I lasted to uh, <laughs> to give this to her, and she was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, so I it's, it's kind of like uh, I steal it or like, <laughs> like <laughs> but no, she she gave it to me. She said, um, it's okay, you can have it. Yeah, gotcha. and this, uh, excuse me. No, saying I was gonna say you're you're stealing art. I see. Yeah, sometimes I do that. Like okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and those two masks, uh, those are uh, pieces made by my dad. Um, 
that's one of the things my dad makes. Uh, I mean, she's like multi, how to say, multidisciplinary. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so like she will, she, she, I mean, he works a lot with a, a wood because he's a wood worker. Uh, and he makes this uh, for, uh, there's a traditional dance uh, in Oaxaca, in the community. Okay. Um, where they dress like this, uh, like, uh, you know, old faces. Um, and they do it after uh, Dia de Muertos. Okay. Like nine days uh, before, after, something like that, or a week, something. I don't remember uh, right now. So, yeah. super yeah. cool. Yeah, those masks look super like realistic especially like the the mustache that he has right there the wow yeah like uh the hair he used for that uh was uh i think i remember it was a bull wow like a tail bull tail wow. and uh like the ones on the other one is white uh they are i think a sheep sheep yeah sheep. wow uh, uh yeah but uh that's one of the things my my dad uh, um, makes, uh, and that actually was about. I was supposed to sell, to sell them, but then I was like, I don't have a lot of things from my dad, and so yeah, I take them. Uh, I keep them. Like I have been since I got here to the to California. I have yeah. I say I have been with them. I lo I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Well, like no, enough about pops and stealing art from people. Let's hear about <laughs> who you are, Cesar. Who are you and what do you do? Can you tell us all who you are and the things that you do, my friend? Yeah, um, well, I consider, well, I don't consider myself an artist. I think I will consider myself more like, uh, how do you say, it? like an artisan, um, handcrafter, okay. like that. Uh, because I think I don't do a lot of like, uh, like mediums, I'm more focused on like one specific, which is a, a wood cut, which is a printmaking technique, uh, wood cut and liner cut. Um, like I said, I grew up in Oaxaca. Uh, my parents are from there, from a, a Zapotec community over there. Mm -hmm. um, and since I was a kid, I I don't know, I got. I was surrounded by art or like because of the culture, like it was like colorful, like um, there's like different communities that do like different types of art, uh, ceramics, uh, tapestry, uh, like woodcut, uh, painting. And uh, also in my family, like I also was surrounded by that because like I said, my dad, um, he was a multi, you know, multi uh, skill. He makes uh, like woodworking, like tapestry, uh, sculpture, uh, painting, uh, watercolor, um, drawing. I don't know, we got that from him, like, you know, to do different, uh, the passion for, for uh, to do things. Um, yeah, and I, and I, uh, I think that's a big influence in, in my career. Is like, I, on my art, I want to like reflect uh, my culture. And uh, yeah, like I have, I, do, I still have to, to work on a piece uh, where I want to like uh, uh, translate those, uh, those memories, you know, where, uh, growing up in Oaxaca. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, Oh, oh, I forgot to say, like, this uh, technique, uh, wood, wood cut, uh, wood, wood cutting, or wood carve, I learned it in Oaxaca because over there is a large, there's a large scene of, uh, like, printmaking. Uh, you, you can see, like, how, uh, like, these uh, workshops use uh, this technique to display uh, on the street, like, as, uh, with pasting. Um, just uh, as a form of protest, like uh, addressing like social, political issues, above all in Oaxaca, because uh, Oaxaca is, well, is one of the, what's that? You could say like it's one of the poorest uh, states in, in Mexico, uh, but 
they are always like I would say like like protesting. It's a, I think it's a rebel uh, uh, state, you know, um, because a lot of the uh, people uh, that are in Oaxaca are uh, indigenous people, and they have like this uh, I would say like this rebel spirit, like they don't want to be like. Um, uh, you know, they don't want the government to tell them what to do because it's their land. Uh, and they have uh, authority about on their on their uh, land. So yeah, so they they have that, and you can see it. Like I said, on the on the art, they uh, you can see on the street on us on the street art. You know, um, there's a lot of that of political and social uh, issues. Um, wow. Yeah, and I love that. So do you? Um feel like you have a lot of well there's a couple of things i wanted to ask because uh first i was kind of curious because i knew um that you were from oaxaca right mm -hmm. um yeah. what how old were you when you came from oaxaca to the to the u.s to california uh i was 22 22 okay. when i when i get here uh and how yeah, old are I'm, you now i'm 33 okay yeah I'm already like, <laughs> uh, I have been here for about what? 11 years. Yeah, 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, I, but yeah, when I, but I go back to Oaxaca, you know, uh, I, I go, well, I used to go like before the pandemic, I used to go like, uh, like every year, you know, gotcha. and then after the pandemic happened, yeah, I stopped. Uh, I, uh, last year was the first time I came, I, I went back uh, after um, you know, through the pandemic. Since the pandemic. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I wanted to, uh, one thing that I was curious about because I knew you were Oaxacan was if you considered yourself someone who <clears throat> um, strictly makes Oax Oaxacan art, like art that represents Oaxaca, or if you're a Oaxacan man that just happens to be an artist. Do you understand the question? Uh, yeah, I think I, I choose the second, the second one because like I said, I'm a Oaxaca, but I don't do art that reflects uh, Oaxaca right now because I don't live in Oaxaca and I'm like, right now that I'm living in San Bernardino, I think I get more influence for, for what's happening in San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. uh, in the community. But, yeah, in the community. Uh, I have been like, I get in, I have been trying to get involved uh, in the community um okay because it started like this um like about it was june june of two, 2022 2022 um i got this opportunity of uh, being an artist in resident at uh, studio aire which is uh, uh located at the garcia center for the arts and uh like before that i i haven't been like doing art for like i don't know for three two years like I stopped doing like uh, like wood cutting, which I, and then um, uh, I got this opportunity uh, by Julissa uh, uh, Julissa Mendoza, who is the director of uh, uh, Studio Aire, and uh, that's where I like started to like get motivated. I uh, had the opportunity to host two workshops, and uh, since then I like I got I have been getting like involved. And after that, I also got the opportunity to um, to participate in the um, Jout Fellowship. Uh, it's like a summer camp for uh, high school and middle school uh, uh, students. And uh, it was the first time also like a, like a, I was teaching to like kids. Uh, I used to do it in but when I was in Oaxaca, but I was like. Um, something more like uh, spontaneous, you know? And here, you know, you have to, to there's all, there's already like a, like a, a plan, you know, and a scheme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but- uh, Why did you, why did you stop doing art? Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's interesting, interesting. Um, okay, I stopped, I think I stopped doing art because, okay, when I was here, um, when I got in San Bernardino, I started to do like the woodcut. 
and uh, like trying to find like venues and uh, like ways to exhibit my, my, my art. And I think I had like three opportunities to showcase my art. And I saw that, I, I think only for those three exhibitions, like I saw that people wasn't interested on, on what I was doing, you know, like there was no interest. Um, and I, I was like, oh, so people don't like what I do. So there's no interest. Um, I don't know. Um, that's how I got like, you know, like I, I, I should stop doing that. And uh, actually after that, I started uh, like uh, customized shoes and uh, uh, jackets and- yeah. you We're know. gonna talk about that too. We'll talk about that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it was because of that, because I was feeling that people wasn't like getting interested on my, on the art I was doing. But then I was after, now I I I I think I think back about that and I I say like there's like different publics you know for uh, art for different art so you just have to find you know your uh, people or the the people you're trying to reach uh, and you just keep going you just not because you had three failings or like you want to uh -huh. stop making art you know you you. Uh, that's what I have learned. Uh, like you know, you just keep doing what you, what you love. You know, and uh, um, I love that. You you're gonna have you, it. yeah. You're gonna get opportunities. You're gonna get uh, exposure, but you just have to, you have to work hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to keep going and keep going. Yeah, right? you have to keep going. And, not you have to keep going. and not give up. You know, yeah. um, you know, we had a uh, Duan Kellum here on the Empire, and uh, you know, he, you know, who he does, right? Creative Grounds. And yeah. he goes to Oaxaca a lot, right? I don't know if you, I don't, you know, do you know who Duan is? Yeah, actually, he was yeah. one of the first uh, person I met when I like started to get involved in the uh, art community. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, he was one of the first uh, person that I met, and uh, yeah, I I, I know uh, he has been in Oaxaca. Um, actually, also like I want to to uh, there's gonna be an art I'll be now. Oaxaca Festival at the Garcia Center uh, next. It's going to be March 3rd. March uh, 30? Yeah, March 3rd. Okay. Yeah, yeah so the reason why I mentioned, uh, we'll definitely remind people again about that. Um, the reason why I mentioned Duan is because he says that, you know, there's a big uh, Afro Mexicano population in Oaxaca <laughs> and stuff like that. And he talks about how he would go there and he'd enjoy that. So I just want to ask you about your thoughts on that, your experience and um, with the Afro-Mexicano in Oaxaca. Okay, um, that's one, uh, I say, that's one thing I noticed when I got here because in Oaxaca, you don't see a lot of like uh, black communities over there. Um, mm -hmm. Because, okay, uh, like there's like uh, eight regions in Oaxaca Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like I wasn't like used to see like uh, you know black people in the uh, in Oaxaca because, like I say, it's more like indigenous communities. Um, and then uh, when I got, I, I was I I had some like stories that uh, you know there was black people on the um, on the uh, how to say coast like uh, region how to say okay. coast, costa in la costa. Mm -hmm. Um, Viendo. yes, when, so when I got here, actually it was last year that, uh, there was this, uh, Oaxaca, Afro Oaxaca festival in, um, at the Garcia center. Yeah. I started to, to learn about that, uh, because it's also like in, in Oaxaca, like they don't teach us about like the black, like black, black, uh, uh history. Yeah. The Africanos. And, yeah, the Africanos, they don't, they don't really teach us. They you said like they brought like, you know, slaves and uh, some of them like, you know, um, uh, went to hide. Um, but I think, yeah, also like that they are, I think they are like um, hide, you know. Um, but uh, I, yeah, like I said, I never had like that, uh, how to say, like interaction with uh, black gotcha. people. 
and it yeah. wasn't like a thing they talked about, you know. No, it's it's not a thing like we we talk. I don't know if it's because I don't know if also Oaxaca is like racist or, or there's something like that. Um, yeah, but because it's uh, now that uh, we are talking about that, I, I'm starting to like notice that, like we never like in the schools, we, they never uh, teach us about that. I know it makes you think. Why not? Por qué? Por qué no? Por qué no? Yeah, por qué? It's, it's you know. Um, but yeah. anyway, let's let's go back to your art. You know, so I noticed that you use a lot of different tools, right? So how many different tools do you use when you're doing like this wood type of art, the shaving, printing? How many different tools are you using? Um, um, I I don't know how many tools I got, but I use many because, and also I have different brands because some of them like have different like uh, how to say dimension, like the tips, uh, and they create different. Um, uh, Actually, I have some of them here, so I'm gonna teach you. Uh, like, this is one like one of the tools I use, but um, this is like one of the like to create fine lines and all of that. And uh, there's another one like this, yeah. like it's to cover yeah. like areas. Uh, and like I said, they are they have different different um, uh, tips. Yeah, I was so, gonna say that first one. Don't pick your nose with that first one. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, they create different textures. So um, I would say like uh, I have like 20, 20 of them, but I don't use all of them. Like it depends. Like I have some favorites, you know. Like uh huh. Which I use, like, yeah, I think like it will be like three, three of them that are my favorite that I use the most. Uh, Got you. Like. Yeah. The ones that you always go to, it's like your go-to tools, you always use them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, like, I always get excited but every time I see like uh, these tools and like when I see new ones. And um, because I, actually there's a kit I want to get, uh, it's a Japanese uh, set, but uh, it's like um, expensive. And I'm gonna, I'm trying to save for that one. Because Got you. I want it. Oh. The good stuff is always expensive, right? Yeah, yeah, it's always expensive. You know? yeah. but uh -huh. it's worth it, right? When you when you spend it, it's worth the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, I got my first my first kit. I got it in Oaxaca, um, and I I have been with them like since I got them. And they are still working, like, really nice. Uh, yeah, beautiful. You know, and I wanted to ask you, you know, because like first of all, I I love your work. It's so beautiful, right? Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> And I, I just want to assume, Cesar, don't, don't, uh, don't hold me to it, but I just want to assume, but you probably have, I'm assuming that you have a lot of different ideas in your head, right? How, how do you decide which idea to, to, to do? How do you decide? How do I decide to do, uh, I think it's like the moment and how I'm feeling, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, like there has been these two pieces I made, uh, like these two large pieces I made for uh, an exhibition um, in Long Beach, and uh, how I decided to do those. It was it, it was because I was I wanted to how to say like communicate something, like uh, because like I said, I've been trying to do art that address uh, um, issues that are happening uh, in the community. And uh, I think, yeah, I get like, when, also like how I'm feeling, like uh, when I have also an idea like clear, like when I say like, okay, I have this idea like develop, so I wanna try to do this first. And, uh, and then uh, this one, because I have pieces that I, I say like okay I wanna I wanna do this one but I just leave it there and I don't finish um, and I think I finish the pieces I get mot, mot, uh, the most motivated to uh, finish or to complete um, and yeah that I that that answer your uh, question or <laughs> yeah I think that answers yeah. it you know because you know you you said you. You know whatever like you feel the most and whatever like represents what's happening in the community so yeah uh -huh. i think so right and um 
Matter of fact, um, I want to show people some of the a uh, uh, little clip of your art. Let me show them. Yeah. <laughs> so, can you tell us a little bit about this piece right here? Yes, uh, that piece. Um, uh, I, okay, I got a grant, uh, which uh, let me uh, work on these two pieces. So one of the this the first one, which is uh, the one uh, on the screen, uh, is called um, uh, I forget about harvesting dreamers or yeah, yeah. harvesting. It's like a gentleman, and he has like three little girls on his back, right? Yeah, and uh, it's more like a tribute to uh, the farm workers um, who, like most of them, are like immigrants. Um, my dad worked on the on the fields. Uh, I think most of the like immigrants, uh, yeah, people that the first time they came, they started like working on fields, and uh, yeah, it's like they are reaching the or trying to reach the American dream. But uh, I think the American dream is reflected on their children, like mm. to see them, yeah, to see them bloom, uh, prosper in this country, you know, uh, yeah, to just to see them good, you know, um, yeah. And this that that piece is uh, uh, um, uh, what I try to uh, like represent. Uh, I love that. Yeah, and uh, the second piece, which is gonna show. Uh, that one is, uh, I think, har yeah, harvesting. No, housing season. Uh, and that piece, um, this that's one of one of the issues. Like I try to to uh, represent from the seminarino uh, uh, co communities, like the house affordability, like house displacement, homelessness, or all, all of that is related, you know, and. Um, I wanted to represent that uh, uh, that uh, yeah, problem, uh, and actually wanted to use like people I know that uh, people that get are getting involved in that, and uh, for that piece I use uh, 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 my friend uh, Christian, who is a uh, uh, part of the so-called trash army, uh, and her daughter. And uh, because she's one of the people that uh, is like involved in in the, with the homeless uh, community, um, and uh, yeah, I want to. I wanted. I asked her if she wanted to be part of this piece, uh, which uh, it represents like uh, how should how getting a house should be like easy as get uh, as get it from a tree, you know, from a from a true uh, fruit tree, you know, used wow. to uh, get it like that. Like, wow, it, sh it should be more easy, you know. Um, that's that's, uh, a, that's a super cool concept. Yeah, and, I love uh, that. Yeah, and I, actually, how another two pieces I'm working uh, right now, but I haven't finished. And yeah, they represent like uh, um, one of them represent like how uh, warehouses, uh, like you know, we are getting like surrounded by warehouses that. We're starting to like, you know, look uh, that to differentiate about uh, more like we need more green areas, you know, uh, and how those warehouses have been like taking those spaces to create those uh, spaces uh, for the community, you know. A hundred percent. Yeah, and the other piece uh, talks about like um, how we have it, how we lost. We have uh, lost the cap the capacity, how is it? Capacidad. Si. Mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, of, uh, how say, creating our own uh, foods. Uh -huh. Like, like agriculture. Not, yeah, like, you know, we get everything from the market, yeah. from uh, the restaurants, from, and yeah, we have been getting like lazy, you know, like, like we should like, get back to uh, produce our own uh, uh, products, you know. Got you. Our own vegetables, uh, all of that, you know. And uh, It's very important. Yeah, yeah it's uh, one of the, uh, another issue I want to, like, address. Got uh, you. A bunch of yeah. flow holes around. Yeah, we, yeah, we, some of flow holes, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, 
great work. I like the concept too. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see both of them. But um, like um, what I wanted to ask you because I think in the housing harp, the the housing harvest one, which is the this one right here, the the, the second one, there is um snails. You have snails in the picture, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So why why are there snails? What 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 do the snails represent? What's that about? Okay. Um, like I said, um, I was making this uh, like um, how to say like comparison or comparing. Uh, yeah. How uh, how um, there's like certain uh, animals that have this uh, ability to uh, to protect protect themselves and like. Or to have like a place where to like hide, or and there's like this type, this animal that have shells, like the hermit uh, crab, the uh, snail, armadillo, the tortuga, I mean uh, tortoise, a toro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like that type of animals that you know they they can go whenever they whatever they want, and at the same time they have a place where to stay, where to feel protected. Uh, and I, I made that uh, like it could be like metaphor, like how uh, humans like should have that uh, um, ability, you know, to uh, to live whatever they want, to uh, have a place where to feel safe, protected. Um, and I made that uh, like um, comparison, like. Or trying to like use a snail as a representation of uh, like those people that don't have a place where to go. Uh, actually, uh, one in uh, that piece, there's there's a snail who has like a broken shell, uh, and it's, yeah, it represents those people that have lost you know, their houses, uh, have have to move, you know, like uh, because uh, it's not only because of like financial. Uh, I say financial problems. It, it could be also because there's a conflict. Uh, there's a you know this part of in the, of the world where there's like conflicts and people have to run run away. Uh, you know from you know trying to to find a new place where to uh, to feel safe. And uh, yeah, that's I think that's the rep uh, the, the snails represent that uh, uh, those people. Yeah. That is so amazing, super cool. Now, now that I had the context. It's it's super cool, you know. Yeah. Wow, it's mm -hmm. so dope. You know, another thing I wanted to ask you because what I've also seen in a lot of your work is color. When did you start incorporating color, and why? <laughs> uh, okay, I wanna say that piece. Um, uh, it's not completed. Uh, I'm still like uh, have to finish it. So the 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 reason is uh is it has red is because that's the area I still have to carve. Um, okay, because when we are like carving, uh, we need to have like a color to contrast uh, where we cutting. Because if we use carpet like that, you know, uh, we just gonna see like the wood, and we don't gonna see like what we're carving. So first we have to paint the uh, wood or the line of uh, red or another color. It can be another color, but uh, it's to used to make contrast when you're carving. Okay, oh, so I, I see where I'm carving. Uh, yeah, and that piece, like as you said, the red part is uh, the, the area I still have to carve. Um, yeah, I didn't have to, time to carve it. Uh, I don't know if some, I, I think it's people that like have uh, like uh, experience uh, wood cutting. They will know uh, like the difference, uh, you know. Gotcha. But you do, but you do add color to some of your pieces, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so I, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I haven't. Yeah, like last year, I started to try to incorporate. Uh, there are some pieces I have been doing with color, um, because I said like uh, I also want to make my pieces colorful. Um, because I also I say like I come from a colorful uh, culture, and uh, I say I should I should start like incorporate color to my to my pieces. Uh, actually, the next then the next pieces I'm working on I 
that's one of the uh, goals to incorporate color, you know. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's the way like uh, I started to incorporate color to my piece. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. to, to help because growing up in the Oaxacan culture that's so full of color and life, it's like I gotta add some color to this bland uh, thing going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got you. I love that. You know, color. You know what's kind of crazy is that I, in my opinion, it's like they give two different types of vibe, right? Like black and white give you a different vibe, and then having color also gives like a different type of vibe too. You know? Yeah. So I, I guess it just depends on um, the vibe you're trying to go for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, because actually, I like when I carve my pieces, I like it how how they look like on the on the wood. I like that texture and I like how they look. But that's why when I print them, uh, sometimes I don't I don't like like how they look on the prints. Mm. It will be only if I get like uh, a paper that that's close to that color, you know, uh, to keep to keep the same like texture. But ah. yeah, most of the time I like I prefer my pieces my, like that, and I, it's it's also one of the reasons like I I think I like. I don't print a lot of my stuff because, yeah, sometimes I, I'm like, you know what, they look nice. It looks nice like that. I don't want to print it. But um, then, you know, you have to sell to your art, you know, to, you know, uh, and there's people that, you know, oh, can I, I would like to have, to have a print, you know. And I'm like, okay, yeah. But uh, like, yeah, for me, it's like, I prefer like that, you know. It's like, no, yeah. But hey, sometimes, yeah. you know, you got to supply the demand, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you yeah. know what I learned sometimes as artists is, and I guess in the business world too, sometimes is this like, um, you may personally, or we as the creators may personally feel a, a certain way about something, but then the customer or the audience may be like, hey, I really like this when you do this, or I really like it this when you're like, well, okay, well, if you want it, then here you go. Yeah, just buy the gold. <laughs> Yeah, because people also like ask me about like, oh, are you selling the original, like the, the woodcut? Mm. And I'm like, no, because this is the original and this is where, where I get the prints, you know? If I sell it, like maybe that person is gonna like reproduce the piece, you know? Um, yeah, and how would you protect yourself from that? Yeah, that's it. Um, oh, you know, a good way you could probably do it is if you carved your name into it, then that could yeah. probably protect it. It could be or also like use like uh, I, I I have been like wanted to try to seal them, you know use like uh, I don't know like resin or something like that. So it, you know it's not uh, it will be much uh, harder to uh, to print, you know. Yeah, because yeah. that would be actually probably a good a good uh, pretty profitable, right? If you actually sold the original, you could probably make some good money off of it. Yeah. But uh, it will be much, much, uh, how to say, um, expensive, or like, like expensive. Because like the prints you say, you know, you can sell it like lower than the original piece, you know? Yeah, uh, and exactly. I, it's another, another, uh, another uh, thing I like trying to like, um, to like how to, how to uh, price my pieces, how to, I think that's one of the, difficult uh, things about an artist is like yeah. how to price your how to price your art you know yeah. because you you know you want to sell it like like as much as you can you know uh, to make a profit but also like there's gonna be people that or it's gonna take time to sell your piece and also like if you lower your your price it's like uh, you, you're also given a like an image that uh, your art is cheap. Yeah, you know? yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That's that's one of the things like um, we have to figure as an artist. Yeah. Definitely, that's definitely one of the big, the hardest things as artists is the business side of it, is knowing how to handle the business. Um, we yeah. know how to do the creative side, but we just don't know our worth. And there's some people, and you've probably seen them. You see, there you probably look at their work and you're like. Wow, they're charging this much? It's not even that good. And yeah. <laughs> sometimes um, I think that's kind of what it comes down to is like having the the faith and the belief that your work is worth a certain amount. And yeah. um, I've been learning too that 
sometimes you can kind of like push the envelope a little bit and people will agree that hey this the art is the art is worth this much and especially yeah. if you especially if you start to like have a conversation with people and like like hey this is done by hand this takes me this amount of time i need this like you know like you start to break it down for people then they're like oh wow like yeah I get it. Uh, yeah when uh when i try to when i exhibit i also always i don't know i always want to try to like have the original and have the the copy you know so people can see like what uh what was the work behind that the print because sometimes they use what they use see the print and they say oh it's just a drawing you know it's it was it's, it's easy to do but when you see like how it's carved like all the cuts i had to do it's like uh, the people like can see like they oh, okay so it was this work and to do this you know it's like uh, exactly. yeah you Used to see the, the 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 work, the hard work behind it. Yeah, the work behind it, the to make the beautiful yeah. work. You know, yeah. and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cesar, but you know, you found this artwork when you went with your dad and your brother, correct? I found I found this this uh this, this type of art, this type of art when you with your okay, with you, yeah, right, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, my I have been my dad is a wood worker. Um, like he makes like uh you know like uh, furniture, uh, he carves, he uh, makes sculptures with wood. Uh, yeah. But uh, like actually the wood wood carving like this technique, uh, it was it was because of my dad because he he took me uh, he took my brother and I to a, a line cut line cut uh, workshop okay. in uh, our community, and uh, it was the first time I got like in, uh, like immersed in this technique um and it, because it was like a free uh workshop for the community because Ooh. in our community we didn't have like a lot of like uh how to say like workshops so it was I, this thing was from the like as a plan for the uh by the government the government brought uh that uh, those workshops to the community and uh yeah, it was the first time I, I got immersed in that technique. Uh, and uh, then it was like two workshops or yeah, two workshops or three. And uh, like we stopped doing it because there was no more workshops. And also like to get the tools over there, it was expensive. Uh, you The only way you could get the materials if you live in the city, uh, we, which it was like uh, 45 uh, minutes from where we live and uh like it's, it's just expensive like living over there is like expensive to go to the city you know we we didn't used to go like that often to the city um uh, yeah and like i said like to get those materials it like uh, it was expensive uh, so, yeah that makes sense uh yeah. the, the reason why i brought it up cesar is because you know i'm sorry did i, did I interrupt you no it's okay no so the reason why I brought it up, Cesar, is because, you know, you came across this beautiful art form with your family, right? With your father and your brother. Do you do you plan on passing this or sharing this art form down eventually if you have kids? I don't I'm not uh, I'm assuming you don't have kids, but probably no. want kids. Do you, do you plan on uh, sharing art with uh, with two hijos when you have them? Yeah, if I have the chance or the opportunity to have a kid. Mm. Yeah, right now it's not in my plan, but uh, yeah, I would like to, you know, to pass down that um, technique. Uh, but not only to them, you know, use uh, to the next generation. Like, I don't want this technique to, you know, get lost or, uh, yeah. That's why, like, that's one of the purpose also, like, of the, um, or the goals from the um, uh, collective where I belong to is a uh, uh, Printmaking collective is uh, called Grafica Nocturna. Uh, it's a printmaking uh, collective that uh, was born here in San Bernardino. And uh, like I say, I it's, um, it was created by a local artist uh, that got interest to uh, you know to promote this technique. Uh, and like I said. It was thanks to 
the art artists in residence at uh, Studio Aire, where like the collective started and like, um, because like I said, I had this large piece I wanted to create uh, and I wanted to, to get the community involved. And I invited some artists that uh, like I got to know here and artists in residence after me that were after me. And uh, I was teaching some of them, like sharing my uh, knowledge um, uh, because some of them were like beginners. And that's how it started. And then uh, after that, we had the opportunity to showcase that that piece at the Chich, uh, Chich Marine Center uh, in Riverside. Um, and after that, it was like, oh, you know what? Uh, we should create a collective. You know, uh, we like how we work together. And that's like uh, when uh, we started to create this collective with uh, Julissa, uh, uh, Brenda, uh, Sarah, uh, Adam. Uh, those are some of like the, the first people that uh, that started to, you know, to get interested in, in the uh, printmaking. Well, Adam and uh, and Sarah, they already had like experience, like uh, some experience, like uh, doing printmaking. Uh, so yeah, that's that's how like the, the the collective started, and you know that's a goal, like promote uh, and uh, getting people like more like interact, you know, with that technique. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and it's so great that you brought it up because I was gonna ask you like how did Graphica Naturna Aturna, how did it start and things like that? And so basically, because you're the co-creator, right? Co-founder of it? Yeah, I'm a, one of the co-creators of the yeah. collective. Yeah. And I was uh, curious, like, I was like, how did it start? And so basically, you guys are just like, we want to bring this printmaking style to the community and make it all stuff. Yeah, and, because like I said um, before, uh, in Oaxaca, you can see this, like, there's a lot of workshops, printmaking workshops uh, in the city, you know. Uh, and, yeah. And uh, it's like seeing, like, how, 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 could I, how could I explain it? it it's like, you, like if you see, like, fast foods or McDonald's. Got like, you. On every corner. Like, on every corner. Yeah, it's like that. You see, uh, you see uh, like, pre, a printmaking studios, uh, like, uh, you see one in the corner and another one, uh, you know. On another corner. Yeah, and you see you see it on the streets too because that's they use the, the walls as canvas. I and love uh, that. when I got here in San Bernardino, like I didn't see that, or I don't see um, very often here in San Bernardino. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, one and, thing uh, that I liked is that when you guys make your boots, you guys like make like little temporary tattoos with it. I yeah. really like that. How did that idea come about? I really like that. That's super cool. Uh, it's not like. Uh, I wouldn't say we 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 didn't create it, you know, because some of there's some print makers that do, do that. Uh, but uh, here, I think I will say that here in the in the Inland Empire, we have been one of the first that have been like like exploring this uh, this uh, way of print making uh, the most. Uh, and it started because um, some members of the collective, uh, like female. Uh, members they had this uh, like project it was more like a, a performance also performance mm -hmm. and like project uh where they created these uh pieces um uh, and then they like they they will have the performance where they like uh tattoo themselves with that and we at that moment before that we were looking for for ways to how to tattoo, how to tattoo uh, how to get those printed on the skin um and uh that's how i started with that with that uh like one, that performance and that same day we had an event in riverside when uh, we started to like implement this uh this thing and like as we started to notice that people love love that uh and since then like people have been interested you know and like they, because they like the interaction they like to interact you know and uh, yep. like to see that you know, it's like, oh, wow, it's like, I didn't know you could do that. Like, um, yeah, and uh, like, it's uh, always crazy, like, how, like, the collective has grown because now we have been invited by organizations, uh, by, uh, like, right now, uh, we just recently, we have been, like, 
uh, offered to work with uh, UCR for a wow. uh, for a series of workshops. Uh, Congratulations! Oh, thank you. We also work with uh, Chafee. I mean, yeah, Chafee Co College. Uh, and uh, I we still like talking about if you want to go to the uh, what's this uh, Ontario Museum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, and also like we have been included in grants. Um, the next project we want to work on is going to be a, a project with a PC for EG. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. No, t tell us what that is. Tell, explain with a little bit what that is. Yeah, it's a nonprofit organization that uh, works for, uh, uh, how do you say, um, uh, environmental justice. Okay, like uh, clean air, clean water. Clean water and uh, house affordability, uh, all those issues. Like, okay. Uh, to let people know about uh, and to give the community tools, you know, to uh, get to know about, uh, uh, like, like, like I said, like the house affordability. Like we want to work with the, with them in a project about uh, how the airport is like uh, the impact of the airport in uh, the communities that are uh, close to the airport. Them. Yeah, how it's affecting those communities. Uh -huh. Wow. And, yeah, we want to work on developing a, a, a series of workshops uh, to work with them. Uh, cool. But, uh, yeah, we're still like we we're still gonna meet uh, or start working on that uh, for I think next this month. Nice. This month, already March. So, yeah. Says, says I want to congratulate you on that project. Congratulations on the that, oh, that, that group, that collective. I also yeah. want to congratulate you on that exhibit, the one that we saw with the with the housing harvest. I want to congratulate you on that. I know that was something that was really recent and very big. Um, so I wanted to congratulate you on that as well. Um, you know, I was I was going through some of your work and I saw that there was some anime, you know, oh. in your work. So talk to me about, do you have some anime influence in your in your artwork? Uh, okay. Um, well, since I was a kid, I think like the only, the only animes I like, I was like exposed to was like, the first one was like Dragon Ball. It was like one of the first. Uh, Pokemon, like Yu Gi Oh! Uh, those are, but I wasn't like a big fan like of anime. And then uh, when I started to um, to custom my shoes and jackets, like a lot of uh, like teams like uh, for the shoes or for those pieces, uh, people always ask me, uh, uh, like anime, like, you know, could you do this character? Could you do this one? And and I was like, yeah, and I, I started to get more exposed to anime. And, uh, and that's how I like started to like uh, get curious about, oh, what is this about, uh, anime about? And uh, and then I started to like, uh, started to see, to watch anime. And uh, I think the people have this misconception about anime that this is for kids. Um, uh, this is your like, you know, cartoon. But uh, like a lot of them, they they are dark, they are deep. Uh, They're they definitely have... not for kids. They're definitely for way beyond kids. <laughs> yeah, because like I said, people think it's for child, you know, but no, that. And I think uh, a lot of people are missing like really good shows uh, uh, from anime, like anime shows, you know, they are. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, like how I like started to get involved with, uh, or like I'm a fan of anime, you know. But I'm not like at at that level of like you know cosplaying and like yeah. going to um, conventions or or buying stuff. No, it's like it's more like I just want to I just like to watch it, you know. Got you. You're and, not cosplay uh, yet. Soon, maybe next year you'll be cosplay. Maybe next year. Um, <laughs> probably, probably <laughs> maybe for for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Know. You know, and <laughs> I wanted to ask you because, you know, you started drawing, you know, this anime character on shoes and on different clothing. How how different is your mindset and the, the ideas when you're doing these um, artworks on clothes versus when you're doing the artwork on wood with the tools? Oh, okay. So, yeah, I can, I, I, I can answer that. Um, okay, when I do like anime or like custom my pieces, it's like 
I already have the idea because also people came, uh, come with the suggestions, you know, oh, you know what, I want this, could you do it like this with these colors? Uh, and I was like, okay, and it's much easier because I mean, the design is already made, you know, the character, I don't have to create the character or you, or you know what? Uh, and yeah, they, I use, it's more, much easier, you know, I just get reference from uh, the uh, internet, you know, and then I try use to like make it fit or like, uh, I use Procreate to like give an idea like how they're gonna look and, uh, uh, or, and also to give uh, the customer an idea of how they're gonna look. And it's, it's much easier, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I do my work, there's more work going in that because first I have to get the idea uh, how I'm gonna do it. And then like, if I need references, I have to take, well, I most of the time I prefer to to take uh, photo references for my pieces. Uh, and I, I like to use, uh, like, like I said, like people I know, people I, uh, I have an interaction with, um, because in that way I can like, I'm sorry, I can tell them like, uh, okay, I want you to do this pose. I want you to do that. And, um, yeah, it's much, it's much, uh, there's more work, uh, behind my artwork than, uh, the pieces I do for like customers or like customized pieces. Uh huh. And are you, are you still considering doing some more customized pieces again? Maybe jumping back into that world a little bit? Uh, yeah, actually I have, uh, I opened my, um, commissions, uh, last month. Yeah. And I have some pieces I, um, uh, I'm still working on. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I think I, I'm more like, uh, focused on right now on, uh, my work, my, the, uh, the wood, the wood cuttings. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just try to find a, a balance, you know, uh, you know, yeah. to, to do this and do, do the other one, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I used to find a, a balance. Uh, yeah. You know, the good part about it is that in the end of the day, it's still art and you're creating art. You know what I mean? You're not, um, dumping cement or emptying trash, you know, it's like, regardless if you do this or regardless if you do that, you're creating art. So that's the good part about it. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so um, What's something that most people don't know about you? Even close friends. Only close friends? Even close friends. Say not even your close friends. And what what's something that people don't know about you? Don't know about me. Mm, I don't know if they think I if they know I'm messy. Like, but uh like when I work, um like have all the tools like everywhere like i think when i work with them they um it's like you know you are more aware about your space but uh yeah but i think like when i work by myself like when i'm really messy like i have like tools here like uh ink uh like clothing uh everywhere like shoes the like the shoes i paint like i have it like um, um that's one thing I'm, I'm trying to work on but i don't know if, if they know about that or they notice about that. And another thing is like when I, I, well, I either, I don't know, I, I used to have like a, an explosive like character. I said, um, I was really like, um, like I used to get mad, like when I, when I uh, didn't do the, the right things, you know, the way I wanted to do. Uh, I think they or they haven't seen me like that. Like, um, but yeah, I used I used to to have that. I don't know if I still have it because, I, like I say, I haven't like getting in a situation where I like get uh, get to that. Gotcha. Um, so, you, so you become like the Hulk and just start throwing things. You're like ah ah. Yeah, because they they see me like you know yeah you're um, I'm very friendly and you know, like or like uh, yeah like friendly or that i don't i don't get angry or but uh i i think like most of us is like uh, we don't see like the that side you know like the uh like you could say the dark side you know <laughs> i got you dark side of the moon i got you yeah yeah you mm -hmm. know we're all full people right like we have a you know like we're full people like we're 
we're not always happy. We're not always sad. We're not always angry. You know, like we're, we're full people. We have a full emotion, right? Yeah. Um, Cesar, I want to thank you so much for being on The Empire. Uh, can you tell us all some current projects that you're working on? Uh, yes. Um, like I said uh, before, I have two pieces I'm working on. Uh, uh, actually, I want to be part of uh, also an exhibition in, at the Cheech. It's going to be, in, I think, uh, October, at the end of, I think it's going to be uh, the fall or yeah the fall fall of this year and but also i also i got the opportunity to curate an exhibit at the same place um in june july so um, we haven't decided like uh ex exactly what date um that's one thing and like we have this project with a um with a uh collective and uh i think there's gonna be more projects coming on with uh, with the pro with the collective but uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things, and also, um, I think I wanna ha I I will have another exhibit in uh, LA. Yeah, um, I still have to check about that. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, but I will definitely follow you to keep up with that. Yeah, so those are one of the things I I, uh, I have been working on, and that, yeah, oh. the plan for this year. Yeah. Oh. Well, Cesar, again, I want to thank you so much for being on The Empire. Uh, let's say 100 years pass by, 200 years pass by, 500 years pass by. What would you like your empire to look like, Cesar, regarding art, family, community? What would you like your empire to look like? Uh, you know what? I would, like, I would like to see it like blooming, you know? to prosper. Um, I would like to see like those issues that I, I want to address on my pieces, like maybe in, yeah, in a hundred years or 200 years that we don't talk about those issues anymore. Like, uh, you know, that we don't have to, uh, to keep address, addressing those issues. Uh, yeah, use, use that, like, you know, that all those problems, we could fix our problems, we could uh, uh, fix everything, you know? Uh, yeah, so that's one of the things I, I think I would like to see in the future. I love that, to, to fix problems, I love that. I yeah. love that. Uh, Cesar, uh, could you please tell everybody how they can find you, how they can reach you, how they can support your art? Can you please let everybody know how they can do that? Yes, uh, uh, right now uh, the only social media I use is uh, Instagram. So you can follow me on uh, Instagram. It's uh, uh, Swy Createx. C Y C U A Y and Createx. Createx. So Swy Createx. I'll say it like that. Um, yeah. So that yeah, that's the only like like because you can also you can email me through uh, Instagram. Um, yeah, but I, I should like get more exposed to other social media. Uh, I will I will do it. <laughs> hey, well, you know, Instagram's a, a good go to. Everyone uses Instagram. It's a good go to. I guess LinkedIn would probably be another good one to get into. And yeah, well, Instagram and Facebook are pretty close together. Yeah, I used to, I used to have Facebook, but I don't use it anymore. Um, you know, I don't want, I don't like to use TikTok because it's time consuming. There's like, I don't know, you get like addicted to, to like you, you see, yeah, you go like that. Like <laughs> and you can pass hours, like, or learn, or, like, see, yeah. Like, yeah. And, uh, you go on yeah. at four, you're still on, it's still four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got you. Also, maybe get, maybe also like try to get a YouTube channel, you know, to, uh, yeah, to showcase my art too. No. Yeah, you know, everything, I think everything's good to have. You know, it's just time, you're right? Putting the time in and, and the work, that's all that really matters. Um, yeah. But for, yeah. I want to thank you again, Cesar, and everybody, I'll, I'll have the, I'll have his uh, Instagram in the description. So that way, if you guys want to be able to click on his uh, page, you can find it that way and go right directly to him and things like that. And um, 
I want to say, you know, I think we, again, I think we learned a lot from today. You know, we learned a lot about Cesar coming from Oaxaca as 22, you know, and all the colorful art. And he had to, you know, he had to add some color to his artwork because he was like, you know, you know, you know when you grow up in a culture with some flavor and some love, you know, you got to put some, put that into your art. And how he <laughs> decided to, um, you know, um, tell stories through his art, right? Like for the, like for the, the house harvesting and having the snails to talk about like basically like homelessness or being without homes and super deep. And then the other artwork with the, with the girls in the back and basically saying that, you know, these farm workers, these immigrants, these um, migrants that come in here, they work in the farm, but what matters is their children, the children of the future. And so, you know, we learned a lot from him, you know, his favorite tool is not the nose picking tool, but he has favorite tools that he uses to help create his art that he also, you know, created art like anime on on fabrics and things like that we we learned so much from him today and i want to thank him i want to thank all you guys for staying in and tuning um if you haven't already please like the video subscribe to the channel we're trying to build this up we're trying to reach a thousand subscribers i know it sounds like a very little but hey we got to start somewhere so please help us build the channel share the video comment down below what you thought um my name is antonio the miles yes i'm the host if you want to support and contribute, all the contributions go back into the podcast, back into the community to make everything better, make everything smoother. And you can get all those links in the description, cash app, dollar sign, T-H-E-E, Empire Podcast. There's Venmo, there's PayPal, there's all those things. And again, I want to thank all of you guys for being a part. I want to thank Cesar Garcia for being on and sharing everything with us. And uh, other than that... We will catch you guys all in the next episode. So we'll see you guys later. Peace. I say